Google's gonna cash the internet. Apple launches something good, but Meta's not too far behind. And your behind GPU, I meant an old one, is saved. It can run faster. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, February 5th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about something that nobody was really expecting, which is Google is officially shutting down the caching of web pages, which is a helpful feature to determine whether or not a website's been compromised is it down? What did the previous web version of that website look like? Especially as you're browsing Google. But it turns out Google wants this to be the latest part of the Google graveyard. As of February 1st, the Google search liaison confirming that this feature no longer exists. And additionally, in the tweets going on, they said, if you want to find out a cached version of the website, look at Internet Archive or some other website and that there's a potential for Internet Archive to team up with Google to present cached versions of web pages moving forward. But the big thing out of here is uh, Bing still supports cached web pages in case you need that for everything that you're doing. It is a bummer. Not everybody uses this, but it does seem like it was helpful for those who needed it, relied on it for the various different things that they were doing. Let me know if Google removing cached pages bums you out. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. Well, I let you know about today's video sponsor, which is our brand new company that we're launching at the end of this month, Rare Brew Coffee Co. This is a long held dream of my wife and I's to have a coffee company and it is finally coming to fruition. We're excited to bring this to you on February 29th, which is also known as Rare Disease Day because it is the rarest of days, but we will have both whole bean and ground coffee at launch. And additionally, we will have some little goodies for a select few members of our community that we'll be giving out in these Rare Brew Coffee Co. boxes. It's not officially ready yet, but if you do go to the website, you can enter your email in case you're interested in knowing everything when the website finally does go live. We may make the website go live in order to get some pre-orders to make sure that we're ordering enough coffee, but we found a way to do it sustainably with an importer who makes sure that the farmers are getting compensated fairly, that everything's above board on how that's happening. And additionally, we're making sure that a portion of the proceeds is going to sing research fund as well as some various other efforts that we're looking to embark upon in the rare disease world so it'll support our family to support other families with children with rare diseases and it's gonna be dang good coffee like it is some of the best coffee I've ever had I'm really excited for this to happen I just wanted to get everybody aware that that'll be coming on February 29th so mark your calendars maybe if you know you're buying coffee towards the end of the month early next month uh Rare Brew Coffee Company might be something you can consider. But while we're embarking on a brand new venture, that's exactly what happened with Apple last week with the Apple Vision Pro. I'm gonna put on mine in order to do this portion of hot news. I've had this since Friday and I wanna read what the CEO Tim Cook said last week in a memo to his employees about what the Apple Vision Pro stands for, saying that it's an iPhone moment for the company and that it's a new era of spatial computing, saying the whole experience of being on the Apple Fifth Avenue setup can reaffirm the magnitude of this moment, as well as our retail team's vital role in delivering this unprecedented technology to the world. I have worn this for well over 24 hours over the last three days. We're gonna have a full video coming out on this soon, but I honestly am both blown away by this device. It actually is a new era of computing. Like the whole spatial computing idea isn't necessarily blowing smoke, but it does also lag behind in some ways that you would want it to not. But also you can't look at many other competitors and say that they're doing it better. So like it does have that first gen. It's not quite everything that they're envisioning it to be. And it's also stupid expensive. But then again, you know, so was the iPhone when it launched for $500 for four gigabytes of storage. I remember one of the conversation points back then was who wants that? Why is it so expensive? Didn't have an app store, had a whole bunch of other problems with it, but then the iPhone 3G and the iPhone 3GS came out and then kind of snowballed from there. I think we're kind of in that with the Apple Vision Pro, but there was a couple cool articles that I saw coming up over the weekend. One of the biggest issues with the Vision Pro is that it's field of view. It feels like you're kind of looking through binoculars. I've heard the metaphor be for some people. And so you can take this little part off, get really, really close to the screens. And some people are trying that out and finding that uh, it, it definitely gives you better field of view, even if it's a worse overall experience. Additionally, people are finding that when the Vision Pro does crash, turns out that the reality, the R1 reality coprocessor doesn't crash at the same time. And so it gives you this warning sign that 
you could have 30 seconds to take off the headset, but it doesn't immediately go black if the M2 chip actually does crash on you, which out of the entire time I've been using it, I had one crash and that was because I was running like, I think six or seven different apps and my wife tried to FaceTime me at the same time and it, it couldn't handle it, which you would hope it gets patched out in future software updates, but it's actually been remarkably stable in my testing. Additionally, it came out that there's a $300 developer strap that can connect the Apple Vision Pro to USB-C and then plug into a computer for development reasons, or it's being reported that Apple employees connect the Vision Pro via USB-C to their computers in order to diagnose them and see what's going wrong if they need to have some repair. You can buy it for $300. You do have to have a paid developer account in order to order one, but it could be that you could use it for a whole host of other things like a USB-C to HDMI dongle. Who knows? I'm not quite sure. And then the last article I wanted to bring up was some one that made me mad, frankly, because of just the language Tom's hardware used in the headline of Gamer Hacks Power World on the Apple Vision Pro. Plays game on 300 inch virtual screen. Makes 115 inch 4K projector look puny. And I think it's just the second word that uh, irks my gurks, which is hacks because you don't need to hack. And they like detail it in the article. You just use Steam Link. Use Steam Link, you connect the controller via Bluetooth. I was doing this literally all weekend. I put many hours into Final Fantasy VII Remake on my PC through my Vision Pro so that I could have a gigantic screen that took up the entirety of my room. And it was amazing. It was incredible. I loved it. It was bigger than my 75 inch 8K TV that LG sent me back in 2020. It was honestly remarkable. I didn't have to hack anything to do it, but iFixit did hack apart the Vision Pro trying to see what was within it and they found in the teardowns that there's a lot going on. This is a very jam-packed device. One of the things that is to be noted about the downfalls of the Vision Pro is that the eyes on the outside don't look very good and they found out exactly why. It's because there's two layers of glass in between and then it's a lenticular film that allows it to like render out properly but it also reduces the brightness. This just really feels like a gimmick. It's terrifying but also just the sheer amount of engineering that went into producing a PC that if you like, once you remove this, the PC is just here. That's all. This is the M2 chip. It's something that I both respect, but also hear everybody's complaints on the $3,500. Additionally, I fix it found in the battery teardown that this thing weighs a whole heckin' ton, 353 grams, but only half of that is actually the battery cells. The other half is the aluminum shell, which is just the typical Apple way of doing it. Then there's the teardowns of the little ear speakers that are there, which use a gigantic lightning port. And then the connector to get to the battery uses a mini lightning port. Even if you force Apple to use USB-C, they're gonna use lightning. You charge this thing via USB-C though, so it's not all bad news. But what is all bad news is in case you have a Bamboo Labs A1 3D printer, <laughs> stop using it immediately because there's safety concerns due to the heated bed potentially malfunctioning and could cause some fire hazards. Hazards. Bamboo Labs reporting this to YouTube influencers that they worked with, not necessarily putting it out to the public first. Additionally, some retailers have pulled theirs from store shelves, namely Micro Center is the one that I saw, but in case you have a Bamboo Labs A1, contact them, potentially get it serviced. Don't continue to use it until you hear more about that, which is also what Tesla has to do with their vehicles. Over a million vehicles, almost two million, nearly every single vehicle that Tesla has ever sold has been recalled, which in the case of Tesla, Tesla just means that it's an over the air update. But the big thing here is that it's due to the size of the safety icons that are being presented in Tesla. As you can see right here, the bottom one is what it was previously. The top one is what it is now. They do get bigger and thicker, which is better for those who have waning eyesight or potentially have some vision problems, which there is a standard for this, which is why Tesla has had to update it. It's not a huge deal. It's a software update, but it's something that does matter to a few people and it's gonna get resolved with an OTA update. And I'm going to OTA over to Reese. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend and, you know, deals. Starting off today, we have the Deep Cool Matrix 40 Micro ATX case for only $37.99, making it $13 off. Then next up, we have the glorious GMMK2, which is their 65% hot swappable mechanical keyboard for only $64.99, making it $55 off. And then lastly, we have the Thermaltek Swafan 12. Swafan. With this three pack, of 120 millimeter fans going for only $66.70, making $32.29 off. And hey, those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description.
description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I don't know what deal to make of Meta and Facebook and what's going on there because Meta had its Q4 earnings report where they talked about how much money they're making in their Reality Labs, which is the version of their company that handles AR, VR, spatial reality, metaverse, all that kind of stuff, made nearly a billion dollars during the final quarter, which is incredible, mostly off the backs of the Ray-Ban Meta glasses, which people have been flocking to. They're actually a pretty neat piece of tech. Additionally, the MetaQuest 3 seems to be having strong sales. However, a billion dollars is about what Apple's expected to make on launch day for this in terms of pre-orders for the Vision Pro. So it's not the best amount in the world. Additionally, they're still losing a lot of money. They lost $4.6 billion in that quarter and more than $16 billion in all of last year, but they are increasing meaningfully year over year. Additionally, Facebook saying that because of all of the different various businesses that they have, they're no longer going to report on how many users they have on Facebook, likely because they've hit the max amount of people who actually care about joining the site. They did mention that Threads, which is the Instagram Twitter competitor, is at 130 million monthly active users, which is about 30% up from what it was just previously. So Meta, Facebook looks like it's on the upswing with its hardware. I'm really curious to see how things shake and bake with the Vision Pro. A lot of the software that I'm seeing in the Vision Pro, I would love to see implemented on the Quest 2, Quest 3, potentially even a Quest 4. This thing honestly does things that I kind of always wanted the Quest 3 to do, but never could. And I'd love to see some software enhancements coming to Meta side of the business as well, because Apple's validating them, which was an article we talked about previously on Hot News. But Google, not trying to validate the name of Bard anymore, with them being reported that they're going to get rid of the Bard naming scheme which was their generative AI that they used. And now it's going to be called Gemini AI, which before it was barred with integrated Gemini. Now it's just going to be called Gemini because we don't know what we're doing. Microsoft had the same thing, trying to figure out Copilot or other various naming schemes of what they were doing. So in case you're confused, just continue to be. And that's exactly what's going on with the RTX 3050 6 gig. It officially launched to a lot of confusion because there were reports of whether it had more or fewer CUDA cores, whether it was 130 watt TDP or 70 watt TDP. And even looking at Ars Technica, even though it launched, their launch numbers don't even have the specified amount of CUDA cores. However, they do indicate that it's gonna be at a 70 watt TDP, which is good. And now benchmarks are coming out about the 3056 gig it appears to be about 20% slower than the eight gigabyte version. So a significant cut down. It's one of the very few GPUs that NVIDIA has launched under $200, but it is coming in at the $169 price point, replacing the GTX 1630 that launched about a year and a half ago, but having about three to four times the amount of CUDA cores, it does appear to be a big upgrade from that perspective, but it retains the naming scheme of the 3050, which is not great. Additionally, more details are coming out about the RTX 4080 Super in that it has fewer power power phases and memory phases than the regular RTX 4080. So it actually can handle less power throughput. Additionally, it appears based on all the reviews that came out that it has a average gaming power that is five watts less than the RTX 4080. Despite the fact that it has more CUDA cores and should be faster, it's running at a lower TDP, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And a lot of benchmarks seem to indicate that, yeah, it was roughly at best 5% more. And a lot of the times actually can be slightly slower than thanks to the fact that it had some of these other issues going on. And one of the issues that you may be having is that your GPU has been running slower because it's getting up there in age. Well, Digital Foundry tested out one of the new mods that converts DLSS 3 to FSR 3, which allows it to be used on older GPUs and found some staggering performance uplifts to the point where certain games like Cyberpunk saw a 67% uplift as well as Miles Morales seeing huge increases, 65 to 75% more performance. However, that does come with issues such as artifacts and visual glitching. But in case you've been looking to get some of this frame generation, some of this upscaling technology into your GPUs, definitely check out this video. However, I do want to introduce just a topic of conversation for the comments for you to answer with whether or not you're okay with this. I know that there's a huge conversation going on with, well, if devs can implement things like DLSS 3, FSR 3, why would they optimize everything that they have for the GPUs when they can just slap some of this software on here and then the games will run faster? Is that how you want it to go? Or are you looking at it from the perspective of, hey, this is breathing new life into my RTX 2060. This GPU that is now aging close to half a decade at this point, but I can get some extra life out of it, potentially could last me another 
two to five years, depending on how much support's on there. I wanna know what you think of all of this FSR 3 DLSS 3 conversation down below in the comments. Well, I respond to your comments from last Friday's episode. We got Derek Johnson saying, darn you, Kyle. Every time you squeeze the chicken, my two huskies stared at me thinking I'm hiding a toy. I saw a lot of comments about that. I didn't even think about that because I don't have a dog because I'm deathly allergic, but I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We'll make sure not to, to have the squeaky chickens in a future episode. We got the Finnish techie saying, imagine some grandma looking at internet plans, seeing Tenji and being like, and this is the reason I include this comment because of how a grandma is portrayed here. Oh, Tenji, that must be double as good as the bloody fast thing in my grandsonny's phone. And at the same price as the other ones too. I ought to snagged myself a mighty deal. Yep, all our grandmas talk like that. We got Sue's Ark saying, ever since YouTube Premium plus YouTube Music existed, I've never even considered Spotify. Close enough in price plus all the benefits of YouTube Premium. It's good to hear. And Fiona saying, I bought the 5700X 3D yesterday at launch and it has been awesome. I got a 2X uplift for my 5600 in Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm, hey, that's amazing. I'm glad to hear it. I got a couple of other people reaffirming the YouTube music type of thing. CyberRich saying, I use YouTube music exclusively for my music streaming. Love that it lets you choose if you want to stream a music video or just the audio to save my mobile data and battery. No need to worry about missing Spotify rap. Kyle, YouTube music has their own version of it. I briefly remember that they implemented that recently. Angry Medic saying YouTube music is actually what I find myself using more often. The app is actually pretty damn good and I love being able to voice search songs in the car with Android Auto with a steering wheel button. And then we got The Seed 7 saying Netflix opting out of Vision Pro seems kind of dumb. I do agree. However, one of the things um, that has become quite clear in my time using the Vision Pro is that there are the iPad apps, which you had to opt out if you didn't want yours included. And there's a lot of good reasons to opt out, including the fact that they are just not as good as the native Vision Pro apps. There's quite a few more interface issues with anything that's the compatible ones because it uses like the iPad hitboxes. So it gets a little weird where you're trying to navigate little small menu sections that appear in the iPad app when you're doing it with the spatial computer. Um, I don't think that's why Netflix did it, but it, it there are legitimate reasons to not have your app just immediately ported over. I likely am expecting that Netflix will give in and release their app on the on the Vision Pro. It seems to be successful enough for them to do that. I don't know why they would hold out on that. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes for Netflix to uh, give up on that one. And then we got Bersinkle saying, you can't beat him, Kyle. He has multiple kids. You can't do it alone. I, yeah, I, I can't be defeated by one rubber chicken, at least not today. And today is no longer now because hot news is coming back tomorrow for more of the hottest tech news. See you then.